Good morning, Javier. Good morning, Arizans. Thank you. Thank you very much for your translation. You are welcome. Hello, everyone. In a previous video, R08, the link of which is provided below, we have demonstrated to what extent the lineage, externally Episcopal and priestly, descended from Bishop Ngo Din Tuck, since his retirement in Toulon is filled with schismatics, heretics, and sectarians. One of its branches has taken out traditionalist deceivers. It is mainly composed of schismatic, schismatic heretics calling themselves all Catholics, who reject the dogma of papal infallibility, and of certain traditionalists having aligned with them and uniting with them for consecrations and ordinations. This collusion of co and collaboration was initially discreet, in particular by the indication of mass centers of some of these schismatic communities, obviously not presented as such. It is already much more open and public in the United States and is now starting to become so in Europe and France as well. A recent fact shows this more explicitly. Indeed, an American character who presents himself as a Catholic bishop has been talked about a lot lately in some of these small circles. Two documents in particular have appeared almost jointly in recent months on the internet concerning him. A video that can be watched on the Fide Post site, and we provide you with the link, and a letter already some 25 years old, called Episcopal Consecration during Interregnums of September 24, 1996, which Catholic Pedia delivers to us by selling it to us dated February 15, 2021, under the modified title of the legit legitimacy of Episcopal consecrations without mandate during the vacancy of the Apostolic See. A question therefore arises here. Who is this, who is this Mr. Pivarunas? This is the question that we will try to answer in this video, even if many grey areas still remain to be resolved. To do this, we will divide this intervention into two parts. Number one, who is Mr. Pivarunas? And number two, what are his positions? Now, the first part eh, will, will be focused on the Pivarunas video. <clears throat> Von Hazel from Fide Post, who claims to be a traditionalist Catholic, therefore received and questioned Pivarunas in front of a camera and published this interview on his side. First, Pivarunas gives a little introduction to himself at the start of the interview. Let's take a closer look. Our comments will gradually supplement this presentation on a few points not addressed or mentioned in a tendentious manner. So, Pivarunas is therefore started by declaring on Fide Post. So, I was uh, able to recognize that I had a vocation in 1974. I was 15 at the time I joined a seminary, a minor seminary, and then uh, I became a religious and I took my final vows in 1981. Uh, in the Congregation of Mary Immaculate Queen. Let us begin by underlining here a discrete twofold distortion and misleading presentation. First, with regards to the den denomination of Schuchardt's sect, and then with regard to Pivarunas himself. One, as for the denomination of Schuchardt's sect, the first mis misleading distortion lies in the fact of passing from the original name of the sect which was and remains the denomination Tridentine Church of the Latin Rite, to a name revised and corrected to pass like an envelope in the mail of Catholic circles, assuming the name and title of Congregation of Mary Queen Immaculate. And please note, the official foundation under this name is only dated June the 14th, 1984. Now, the USA has a multitude of sects of this kind, most often stemming from Protestant descent, which usurp the name and title of church. Let's listen to journalist Bob Cabbage, Cabbage's explanation in a series of articles titled The Tridentine Latin Rite Church regarding Schuchardt's sect, the first of which was published on November 27, 1980, in the American newspaper The Catholic Northwest Progress. 
Now I'm quoting, okay? Although TLRC, which stands for Tridentine Latin Rite Church members, are often called Fatima Crusaders, that title is a misnomer, Sugar said. The name denotes an apostolate of the TLRC and not the church itself, he said. Members of the Fatima apostolate try to live up to the, to the requirements for a holy life made by the Blessed Virgin Mary in her Fatima appearances in 1917, he said. The TLRC is also known by the name Mary Immaculate Queen of the Universe Community. It is incorporated in the state of Idaho as Christ, Christ the King Priory. In Washington, it is incorporated under the title Tridentine Latin Rite Catholic Church of St. Joseph. Other TLRC titles appear in its mainly literature, such as Our Lady of Fatima Crusade, The Reign of Mary, which is also the title of its official newsletter, and the Catholic Catechetical Center. Although the church has several titles, what Spokane area residents have come to know as the Tridentine Latin Rite Church began in Kirk of the Land in 1968. And that is taken from Babkovich, the TLRC, Set Walks Corridor of Past, which is the first in a series of articles in the, in the Catholic Northwest Progress from the Inland Register, 27 uh, November 1980, page 3. Another author, Michael Kinnell, in a book titled The Smoke of Satan, published by Oxford University Press 1980, gives us this precision. In the autumn of 1971, Sugar was both ordained a priest and consecrated a bishop by Daniel Q. Brown, one of the numerous bishops connected with the North American All Roman Catholic Church. And immediately afterwards, he changed the name of his community to the Tridentine Latin Rite Church, TLRC. We will smile when we hear Pivarunas use the term sounding more Catholic of CMRI, that is Congregation of Mary Queen Immaculate, to designate this sect in the 1970s. Number two, as for Pivarunas himself, he therefore entered, according to him, in 1974, Sugar's Minor Seminary. Sugar is therefore his bishop. However, Kineo, in, the, in his book The Smoke of Satan, pages 107 and 108, tells us the following anecdote. When Pivarunas was just 14, he went to a lecture by Father Denis Chiquan of the TLRC, and almost immediately afterwards, he decided he wanted to join the organization himself and study for the priesthood. Now, this is very important. His parents, Pivaruna's parents, were opposed to the idea, mainly because they mistrusted, mistrusted Franz Francis Sugar. They did not trust him. And the following year, Pivarunas ran away from home to join up with the TLRC in Cordelain. And a little further, we read this confirmation. Pivarunas was forced to run away from home to join Mount St. Michael's. Note also that Kineo Lakavich refers to the sect under its original name, which is TLRC, not CMRI. Mm. Now we're going to study uh, more closely the case of Sugar. At this point, it is necessary to take the time to present in more detail Sugar, who was a layman bond in three days, in three days, note this, priest and bishop, only in three days whom Pivarunas himself recognizes his scandalous immorality. That is taken from Cuneo on page 100, 108. I'm, I'm quoting now. His immorality was scandalous, but I continue to regard him as my legitimate bishop. That is what Pivarunas said about Shukar. Let us first know what Pivarunas says about it in his interview with Fide Post. Now this congregation, Mary Macla Queen, was started in 1967. Uh, very uh, before the Novus Ordo, but after Vatican II. Uh, it originally was a part of what was called the Blue Army. It was a, a organization to promote the message of Our Lady of Fatima. But because of Vatican II and the changes, the Blue Army was going more toward the Novus Ordo, so a group of these people separated and started what was called uh, the, the uh, Congregation of Mary Immaculate Queen. Now, 
cabbage gives us a precision here. Then the Vatican II changes, the Vatican II changes in the Roman Catholic Church also changed the course of Shuka's life. As the International Secretary of the Blue Army of Our Lady of Fatima, Shuka spoke to thousands each year on the Rosary and the message of Fatima. He began to put his personal views on the new rite of the Mass, the changes sweeping the Catholic Church and the invalidity of Paul VI's papacy into his lecture. Most audiences turned away from him, but some clung to him because of his zeal to speak out against Rome concerning matters that, that they felt were destroying their faith. In 1967, the Blue Army dismissed his international secretary from his ranks for his actions, but the die had already been cast in Shuka's eyes. He and his handful of followers did not want to stay with an organization that still swore allegiance to Pope Paul VI. So we must therefore know that Shukar first undergoes a demotion by the Blue Army before he, he comes to resign himself. An article in the Catholic Born American newspaper, The Catholic Northwest Progress, dated April the 12th, 1974, reads, The faithful in the Seattle Ar Archdiocese must be warned against the Shukar Fatima Crusade. Bishop Trident told the Progress. It is in total opposition to the church teachings. Its members have set themselves against the decrees of the rightful ecclesiastical authorities. As for Shukar himself, he has undergone a bizarre ordination to the priesthood, a later consecration to the episcopacy, he now calls himself bishop, while under canonical impediments and with a proper authority. Because of this ordination and consecration by a bishop of a heretical sect, Shukar has invoked automatic excommunication, Bishop Trainer asserted. And this excommunication could also be meted out to those who, knowing the circumstances, participate in religious functions where he exercises his illicit priestly authority, <coughs> excuse me, or who knowingly provide encouragement to his obduracy, the Boise Bishop said. Father John Morgan, pastor of the St. Pius X Church, in Kirk Dalin, told the Progress that he had, on various occasions, attempted to reason with Shukar in an effort to affect a reconciliation with the Church. But I have received no encouragement, he added. Father David Kearns, in the Boise Diocese Chancery Office, said, Bishop Trinan has made a number of efforts to correct Shukar, but to no avail. He seems determined to continue in error. The insidious and confusing aspects of the Shukar movement, with its title of Fatima Crusade, its leaders being called bishops, priests, fraters, oblates, and with its strong appeal to further Marian devotion, which is typically Roman Catholic, creates an appearance to the uninformed devout Catholic of legality and orthodoxy that the Shukar movement does not in fact possess. Bishop Trident declared, the faithful in the Seattle Archdiocese must be warned that the, the Boise Bishop continued. Shukar and his cult have no connection with the established licit Roman Catholic Church, an encouragement not only given him and his followers, regardless of the form, is a great matter. In his early days, Shukar relied on five Catholic priests who continued to serve according to the traditional rite of the Church. Among them was Father Lawrence Bray, who had known him from his time in the Blue Army and had been keen to help him with, when Shuka had cut himself off and founded the Fatima Crusade. This priest, Father Bray, noting the beginnings of deviations in the way Shuka acts and the way he leads, had tried to warn him. But in the face of Shuka's, Shuka's stubbornness, he had to part with it. Here are his vivid descriptions of the atmosphere in the Spokane sect, which appeared in the same American newspaper, The Progress, of April the 12th, 1974. Writing in the Redman, June 15, 1972, Father Lawrence S. Bray, who was a colleague of Shukar during the, lat the latter's Blue Army period, says, While even here no attempt is being made to completely itemize the case against Mr. Shukar, I will endeavor to summarize the more salient points at issue. To begin with, 
families, the basic unit, unit of society, are being broken up, not all by Jesus Christ and his teachings, but over an egotistical Jew from Seattle and called Berlin. The heresy of Jans Jansenism, especially in Sirius, because it masquerades as an anti-heresy, is present in almost every detail, from extreme moral rigorism to extreme doctrinal predestinarism, a novice cult of a person with total mind control of his followers. The pretensions of supreme magisterium and being the ultimate norm of orthodoxy and direction, and the consequent total and blind faith in him, right or wrong, and canonical foundation and direction of a religious community of more than a mere private nature and with no adherence to legitimate ecclesiastical authority. Usurpation of priestly or canonical functions and titles and or pretensions thereto. Even prior to his recent illicit ordination consecration, explicitly or implicitly prohibiting attendance, attendance at perfectly orthodox and valid traditional masses offered by priests critical of him or in circumstances not approved by him. Rejection, in effect, of all ecclesiastical and civil authority today, leaving himself as the sole remaining norm and magisterium. Erroneous teaching of the extent of papal infallibility, going beyond the mind and definitions of the Church in this matter. Erroneous teaching on the, on the doctrine of salvation and practical limitation of the elect to his followers alone. Erroneous explication and application of the Pauline privilege doctrine with the consequence of marriages breaking up wrongly on that pretext. Erroneous and irresponsible wielding of the de Montfort consecration. Remember Saint Louis Marie Guignon de Montfort, he had a formula, a formula for consecration. With the consequences of its necessity wrongly understood and its being subverted into a vehicle of consecration and sheer enslavement. Erroneous moral teachings characterized by an orthodox rigorism of the Manichaean and Jansenist type, a scandalous fraternization of the brothers and sisters, and their late hour names day parties, extreme hard harshness in treatment and discipline of the school children, and the fostering of gloom among the community, unnecessary engendering of persecution and crisis and the rankness and charity towards outsiders and those who disaffiliated. A third order organization under uncanonical lay leadership and involving dubious vows and commitments, mind control and secrecy. Communitarianism involving inordinate collectivist community, community emphasis and sub subservience of life and property to the sugar community. Interference with family duties and marital obligations, and the tendency to separate spouses. Sensitivity and group dynamics techniques. The counseling and practicing of disloyalty to country, draft evasion, etc. A spiritual tyranny involving a Machiavellian ethic, whereby the end justifies the means. A long standing habit, habit of gross impudence, rashness, and bitterness both as regards the manner of public statements on the church and hierarchy and as regards the consequent course of action to be followed. And this is the spurious presentation of this sect by Pivarunas, which von Hazel swallowed up and presented as, was, as what he said would be the oldest traditional Catholic community? No way, no way. In an article from the same newspaper dated February uh, the 15th, 1978, we can also read, Shukar, a Bellevue, Bellevue native, was native, sorry, was Pacific Division lay leader for, for the Blue Army of Our Lady of Fatima until 1968, when he broke with the Vatican because of changes that emerged from the Second Vatican Council. In 1971, he was consecrated by Bishop Daniel Brown of the Old Roman Catholic Church, a schismatic group though Shuka refuses to recognize the, the denomination. <clears throat> Kavich, in a series of articles entitled The Tridentine Latin Rite Church, specifies, Shukar was ordained and consecrated in 1971 by a bishop from a schismatic Catholic sect. 
found it in Holland, Schuka's consecrated sect broke away from Rome in 1723. Called the Church of Utrecht at the time of the schism, the sect is now known in America under the title of the Old Roman Catholic Church. This because of the self-proclaimed Old Catholics, having refused the dogma of papal infability and having separated from the Church, went to seek ordinations and consequences from the aforementioned Jansenist of Utrecht. <coughs> Kavich says again, in October 1971, he obtained the priesthood and episcopal orders from Bishop Brown. The ceremony took place in a rented motel conference room. A very religious place, isn't it? So, it took place in a, in a motel conference room in Chicago, attended by approximately 25 TLRC members. Bishop Brown's orders of the Old Catholic Church were never recognized as lawful by the Roman Catholic Church due to the split from the Church of Rome and the papacy in 1723. <clears throat> now, while advocating celibacy, the Old Catholic Church does not prohibit its clergy from marrying. <clears throat> Bishop Brown was married with two children. Don't forget, Shuka's consecrator, Bishop Brown, he was married and he had two children when he consecrated Shuka Bishop in 1971. And that is a fact that drew much criticism from ex-members. Okay, because they preach one thing, but they do uh, the opposite. Those who question the consecration of Shukar also point out that Bishop Arnold Matthew, who was a prelate of the Old Catholic Church living at the turn of this century, of the, of the 20th century, was excommunicated and anathematized, which is the most severe form of excommunication of the Church, by Pope St. Pius X in 1911. St. Pius X thus sanctioned Matthew, who was a Roman Catholic priest, after he was illegally consecrated by a bishop of the Old Catholic Church. Now, Bishop Brown, who was Shuka's consecrator, he wrote in a letter to Claude, and Claude was uh, a former uh, member of, of Shuka's sect, but he, he, he later left the sect. So Bishop Brown wrote to, to Claude, My intention was only to ordain him to the priesthood. And then a little later, within two or three years, to consecrate him bishop. However, he insisted so strongly on the fact that it would be absolutely necessary for him to be consecrated bishop immediately that I gave him, to my eternal regret, and gave him the episcopal consecration. Mm, well, it is known that in these circles such acts are monetized. So it was a draw that must have decided Brown, we suspect. In an article from the same newspaper, that is the Catholic Northwest Progress, of July the 5th, 1984, entitled Schismatic Bishop Goes Into Hiding, we can read Spokane, the founder of the Schismatic Tridentine Right Latin Church, ousted in June by his former chief assistant, has gone into hiding and is under court order to return $250,000 to the set. Bishop Francis K. Schuker, who has led TRLC since he founded it in 1968, <clears throat> and Father Denis Chiquan, his former vicar general who now claims leadership of the group's estimated 5,000 adherents, have excommunicated each other and traded accusations of immorality. <clears throat> Frater Chiquan, Father Chiquan, also says he is now in charge of all TRLC property valued at about $3 million. That's a lot. In Washington and Idaho, where most TRLC followers live. Priests ordained in this sect, in the sect call themselves Frater rather than Father. It's curious. TRLC, also known as the Fatima Crusaders, claims to be the only true remnant of the Catholic Church, saying the Roman Catholic Church was taken over by Freemasons during the Second Vatican Council. 
Bishop Shukar was consecrated in 1971 by another schismatic Catholic bishop. Frater Chiguain and other leaders of the TRLC began actions to oust Bishop Shukar after Spokane TV station KKLY broadcast a four-part expose in April, including a segment in which four former sect members said the bishop had made homosexual advances on them. That is serious, very serious. The bishop and about 20 followers fled from Washington state after allegedly taking charge records and as much as $250,000 from bank from local bank accounts, opponents said. Before the court, the court hearing, Spoken TV reported interviewed the bishop at an undisclosed out-of-state hiding place. In the interview, Bishop Shuka called the, the court action an attempt to harass and traumatize him and said that Father Chiquan, not he, was guilty of moral offenses, and he declared his former colleague is communicated. In an article in the same newspaper dated May the 21st, 1987, entitled Bishop Shuka Arrested for Possession of Drugs, Stolen Property. Drugs and stolen property, okay? Note that. We can read Bishop Francis K. Shukar, founder of the schismatic Tridentine Rite Latin Church, was arrested May, on May the 9th at his priory at, in Lake Almanor, California, for possession of drugs and stolen property. And please note the name used by this newspaper. It uses the Tridentine Rite Latin Church, and we are already in 1987. The Pluma County Sheriff's Department seized about $200,000 in cash, about half of it in U.S. money, and the rest in currency of West Germany, Mexico, Canada, and Switzerland, Sheriff's Department spokesman Steve Wright said. A quantity of gold and silver was also seized, he said in a May the 15th telephone interview. Police also seized a large quantity of narcotics, including Demerol, morphine, Dilodid, Percodan, and marijuana. Wright said, Bishop Shukar, who once headed the Tridentine Church with headquarters in Spokane, Washington, fled that area in 1984 after he was ousted amid charges of homosexual activity. Shortly afterwards, he was ordered by Spokane County Superior Court to return $250,000 he was accused of taking when he separated from the group. Bishop Shukar founded his church in 1968 in Cardinal Lane, Idaho. It is reported to have several thousand members and claims it is the only two remnant Catholicism because the Catholic Church fell into heresy with the Second Vatican Council in the 1960s. The music case. Let us continue what Pivarna said about himself in this interview. I took final vows in 1981, and in 1985 I was ordained a priest by Bishop George Musi. In 1991, he made his final vows, still under Shukar, whom, he saw, whom, whom we saw he considered as his rightful bishop, but of whom he absolutely never speaks. Yeah, that is important to know. Pivarunas, he never speaks about Francis Shuka, never. Thus erasing a scarcely glowing part of his past. We are therefore in 1985, and music enters the scene. That is what Pivaruna says in the interview. And interestingly, he was ordained in the 1950s. In his presentation on Wikipedia, this is specified. He was ordained a priest on May the 22nd, 19. 1952 by Bishop Wendolin Noll of Galveston. Now, Father Clarence Kelly, summarizing the various documents he has examined in a book entitled The, Circuit, the Sacred and the Profane, where we read on page 302 and the following these few indications concerning music. Father Musi was, for, was formerly a priest of the Diocese of Galveston, Houston, Texas. According to the Catholic Directory, he served as assistant pastor at the following parishes, St. Joseph, Houston, 
from 1953 to 1955, Immaculate Conception Groves, Texas, 1956 to 1958, St. Mary's Liberty Bell, Texas, 1959, Resurrection Houston, 1960-1962, St. Louis, Winnie, Texas, 1963, and St. Augustine, Houston, 1964. So six assignments in 11 years, okay, please note. Six appointments in 11 years, therefore, in different places without becoming parish priest. Kelly, quoting Checada, Father Anthony Checada, further tells us that from 1965 to 1968, he was noted on the official records of the Diocese of Galveston as being absent on sick leave. Then on the directory appearing from the beginning of 1969, his name disappears. <clears throat> so this corresponds in part to what Pivaruna says following his interview as to the fact, but he cleverly and deceptively adds the following. But he had a heart attack very early on, so he was on sick leave. And being on sick leave, he was outside of what was happening with the changes in the church. However, by analyzing more closely the reality, which is much less brilliant than, Piva, than what Pivarunas would like us to swallow, we are going to notice something big before others here. Reading Chicara, always quoted by Kelly on page 302, we notice that in 1977, he, that is Miji, he runs his parents' restaurant. His parents' restaurant? What to say? Let us note in our memory then that from 1965 to 1968, he is listed as absent on sick leave. By digging the vein a little, we find in the registers of U.S. companies in 1966, just like in 1969, which is the one where he disappears, Chicada Dixit, Dixit, according to Chicada, on the Catholic directory lists, the mention of a catering company called Hofbrau Garten, managed by G.J. Musi. It is specified that Hofbrau -Grauter, the Hofbrau Grauter restaurant was opened in 1963 by Jack Papich. By pushing our investigation a little further, we discover at least two other companies with G.J. Musi as manager. The first one was Rancho Alegre Corporation, registered in the company's register on April 8, 1968. And the second one was Garden Motors Incorporated, registered on the same day as the Hofbrau Garden German Village Incorporated. That is November 23rd, 1966. And the link to his father's first job can be made here, see below. However, if it is interesting to know here that his father was also called George, it should be clarified, one, that he did not have a middle name, it cannot therefore be designated on the text and register cited above, above. And two, in addition, he began in mechanics with his father, who was a Syrian immigrant, who arrived with his wife in the United States in the, in the 1890s, and who was therefore the grandfather of our George Joseph. While his father George, at the time of the alcohol prohibition in the USA, quickly became a renowned gangster, <laughs> like those we imagine in real thrillers, yes, and with active murder, who served five, five years in prison from 25 to 30 years, and died assassinated in 1935 by a rival guy. <laughs> Terrible. So this restaurant, the one of these parents, all things considered, it may indeed be. <clears throat> Pourquoi pas? Why not? After the assassination of his father by a member of the Machio crime syndicate, that is the, the mafia, okay, his mother Mary Musi, born Abraham, will become Mary Papich, Papich. By her marriage to a, man, to a man named Jack Papich, who opened a restaurant of the same name in 1963 on the same premises. And please see Daily News of Galveston. The Hubbard Garden German Village was located on FM 517. The Hubbard Garden was opened in 1963 by Jack Papich. 
Either way, in 1966, George J. Musi seems to have traded his castle for the more promising business attire. Money uh, was easier uh, to find in uh, being a businessman than, than a priest, it seems. Right. We are therefore very far and very far from the advantageous picture that Pivarunas wants us to swallow, adding when he adds, Pivarunas adds in the, in the video. Um, he was on sick leave, he did, not offer, he did not have to offer the new mass, he continued offering the Latin mass. And mm. That would be that would be beautiful if it was true, but I don't think that was true. Even so, one prophet does, does not exclude another. Chicada says for his part that music informed one of the three traditional priests who ate that day in his restaurant that he occasionally celebrated mass in an Orthodox Greek rite church. He informed one traditional priest that he occasionally celebrated private mass in a Greek Orthodox church. So we see he was already among schismatics, okay, all his life. Thus, after having defrocked, like so many others at, at the same time, around 10,000 priests in the USA, he returned to the religious circuit after his meeting with these three traditionalist priests in 1977 in his restaurant off Brown Garden near Dickinson in Texas. And a few years later, he seized the opportunity to put on the Episcopal habit. In fact, Father Carmona, crowned in the speech marks crown, uh, of course, Musi on April the 1st, 1982, less than five years later. And Kelly specifies this on page 302. We are going to, to quote Kelly. In January 1982, Together with another American priest, Father Musi visited the newly consecrated fathers Carmona and Zamora in Mexico. It is not known if he had any personal contact with them prior to this visit. Whatever else may have been discussed, one thing seems to be certain. Father Musi was offered the episcopacy. On April 1, 1982, less than three months later, Fathers Carmona and Zamora performed the ceremony in the Acapulco Chapel. In fact, it was in the, in, in the, in the Acapulco Cathedral, if I'm not wrong, if I'm not mistaken. Now, we're going to take a look at various collusions of music with the old Catholics. Before returning a little further on the illegitimate origin of the consecration of music's main consecrator, namely Carmona, it is advisable to underline several of, it, of its collusions with the old Catholics. And here are six specific cases which are cited in, in Numbers 31 and 32 of the French Review Subtum Presidium, which is published by, by Monsieur Lavezans, who is uh, by my side here. And in, in this number of his review, in Subtum Presidium, published in October 1992, on page 15, we read. Number one, Musi, in addition to the replacement he requested from schismatics of Spokane and those he made for them, used as collaborator Father De Caso, married on, on May the, the 24, 1975, by a priest of the Society of St. Pius X, ordained in the speech marks, ordained, in 1992, by Father, again in speech marks, Joseph Maria, who was sacred in speech marks for the first time in 1964, and then conditionally in 1967, by an old Catholic bishop. Mm. Please see the Roman Catholic, number one, 1991, page 10. <clears throat> number two, he receives a visit from Jean-Marie Roger Kosick on March 26, 1990, who belongs to the old Catholic schismatic community of Cachou, which is in southwest France, and was illegitimately sacred by Ngo, Ngo Din Tuck on uh, October the 19th, 1978. Um, please see Sangre de Cristo notes. Number 71, 3, 1992, page 11, 
a journal edited by Father Ed Jones, Father in Speech Marks, all Catholic, he was an all Catholic, linked to Spokane. Three, music consecrated, speech marks again, on February the 12th, 1987, Fa Father Miguel, 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 ordained priest, eh? again in speech marks, on May the 28th, 1981, by Jean Laborie, who was a schismatic bishop of the old Catholic sect known as Latin Church of Toulouse. Please see Catholics Forever, number 99, page 6, Sangre de Cristo, numbers uh, 69 and 70, page 17, and papers distributed by Miguel. And already sacred on May the, oh, oh sorry, August the, the, the 5th, 1985, by the old Catholic, uh, P. Sal, Sale, himself sacred on June the 27th, 1983, by the old Catholic Datesen, himself sacred in speech marks, of course, by Tuck on September the 25th, 1982. Please see that the two Tuck line bishops, 11, 1988, and 4, 1992, publishing Catholic Forever, which is Makina's review, Makina's magazine. Four, music consecrates, in speech marks again, on June the 27th, 1985, Mark Anthony Pivarunas, then superior of Spokane. Okay, so he was consecrated by music in 1985. Five, music consecrated on August the 12th, 1987, the old French Catholic Michel Mann. Six, in addition, Musi will end his days living in the old Catholic community of Spokane, where he felt so well at home. Until, he, until his death, on March 29th, 1992, the Mass of Burial having been celebrated by John Hesson, who was sacred in speech Mass, on June the, uh, the 12th, 1991, by Olivier Olavec. Himself sacred, again in speech Mass, on October 21st, 1988, by Makina, himself sacred, Makina, by Gerard de Laurier on May the 7th, 1981. And his body was taken to the cemetery by Father Kervin Velencourt from, so from Spokane. See Sangre de Cristo, number 71, page 11. This is the bishop from which Pivarunas holds his priesthood. But what about his consecration? Pivarunas says, Who consecrated me, Bishop Carmona, he was ordained in the 1930s. And now, it is interesting to note in this place that Pivarunas has the same consecrating bishop as the one who ordained him. Musi was indeed consecrated on April the 1st, 1982 in Acapulco by Carmona. However, Pivarunas omits here a frightening detail that happened about a month after his consecration. Let the publication, the Ephemerides Acapulcane site, tell us about it. On September 24, 1991, Carmona ordained Marco Antonio Pivarunas as bishop in Spokane, Washington, USA. On November the 1st, 1991, that is roughly a month later, after uh, Pivarunas consecration in speech marks, on November the 1st, 1991, priest Moises Carmona Rivera dies on the Mexico Querétaro Highway, exactly at San Juan del Rio, in front of the Hotel La Estancia at 8 a.m. in the morning. When the driver of the car fell asleep, which collided with the dividing wall, Priest Carmona got out and was run over by a trailer. Terrible. The medical report indicates 
head trauma with immediate brain mass, mass expulsion, half face crushed, same abdomen, crushed legs, and severe right hand. He was accompanied by Pablo Arzuega, priest, David Contreras, priest, and another. Transferred to Acapulco, he was prepared at the Manzanares funeral home. Funeral in the Temple of the Divine Providence. Burial in the Pantheon of Las Cruces. At all times, the Archbishop of Acapulco, Monsignor Rafael Belo Ruiz, was attentive to the tragedy of a son who has been lost. And at all times, he intervened so that the transfer of the corpse was expeditious and according to what the priestly dignity required. He even financially covered an important part of the expenses. Now, please note this. Carmona had his right hand severed, and the right hand, as you know, is the one that wears the pastoral ring and which is used for blessing. Okay? So he had it severed. Exactly. When we know Carmona's multiple collusions with sects, after his illegitimate consecration and of his consecrated persons indicated below, how can we not see a clear punishment? Terrible but true. Now we're going to look at to look into Carmona's, Carmona's collusions with sects. Carmona's collusions with the old Catholics are generally indirect through his consecrated. Nevertheless, there are two direct ones which are of size, which are of importance, of relevance. The first one was when he reconsecrated P. Hillebrand after this one has been consecrated in speech marches, uh, of course, for the first time by the old Catholic P. Sal on the, as the first tagline bishops shows. Public, published by Makina in November 1988 in Cath Forever. And number two, the last coronation that he confers, everything in his speech marks, barely a little more than a month before God calls, calls himself to his judgment, is nothing less than that of the superior of the old Catholics of Spokane. Since August 19, 1980, Mark Anthony Pivarunas, thus ensuring the ecclesiastical survival of his schismatic community, until then dependent for the ordinations of George Musi, and then Makina. Now we're going to look into uh, the collusion of links in the Carmona branch with sects. And we find out that there is more than collusions of the links in the Carmona branch with sects, since four of them are members of, of all Catholic sects. Two of the consecrated by Carmona, Hillebrand Pivarunas, C34, uh, and, and the following and two of the consecrated by Musi, Meng and Miguel, uh, C50 and 346. And there are fifth one, Louis Bezelis, C357, founded his own sect, 349. As for three of the, of the other four, the Mexican Bravo, C357, and the two Germans, Seguidon, May the 24, 1985, by George Musi, who were Conrad Altenbach and Graf Ralph Siebert, have already been called to, jo to God's judgment. Finally, Martinez, C337, ordered in speech marks uh, in March 1992, two Argentinians, Sixto and Reyes, Belonging to the Morello group, the latter, former priest of the Society of San Pius X, left it in 1989, see 428, and employs a certain Mat Matei, ordained, who was ordained among the conciliars in the new rite, which had thus been accepted by Monsignor Lefebvre in the Society of San Pius X, considering his ordination was valid. Morelos dissidents gathered in Cordoba, Argentina. Among them, the Mexican abbot Medina, ordained by Bishop Lefebvre, has, has since returned to his country. 
As for the others, Spina and the two Schettino brothers, ordered by Carmona, C-397 and 524, and their colleagues, they were very recently invited by Martinez to come and join him in Mexico, in Guadalajara. Since the death of Carmona and Bravo in 1991, Martinez remains for the moment the only consecrating talk-line person in South America, and we find that in CAF 4, 101, number 8, 1992, page 4. As we have already mentioned, in 31, 38, excuse me, 47 and 53, the various other collusions of music, have, after having been considered as an example the way in which it was promoted, we will only have to give some indications on Bezeris. Let us, also know, let us also know this other precision. Musi was therefore a Catholic priest who later became bishop of the tagline, after having been a butler for years in the meantime. Then, with another tag bishop, he became the founder of what can be only be called a new religion with its own magisterium. According to the Roman Catholic publication, January 1983, page 14. And this is undoubtedly true, since music created his own diocese and claimed possession and of a jurisdiction extending over half of the United States. That is a very big jurisdiction, an enormous jurisdiction. Now we're going to look into the Bezelis case. The same American review extends a lot for four pages, eh? yes, from, from page 10 to 14, on the Bezelis case. We will only retain a few significant features here. Father Bezelis of Rochester, New York State, entered the Franciscan Order in 1952, then spent 18 years in Korea as U.S. Army chaplain, returned to the United States in 1978, and eventually settled in Rochester, his hometown. In December 1979, he bought a house and equipped a small private chapel to offer the traditional Mass. In 1980, he founded a magazine called The Seraph, and in number one of, of this magazine, he clearly declares Pope John Paul II is the legitimate vicar of Christ on earth. We pray for him every day at Mass. By the way, Catholics in upstate report that Father Bezelis criticized other traditional priests who are said to act against the Pope. We found that in the, the Roman Catholic, yes, uh, 11. Now, a pseudo foundation in union with the Pope. <laughs> this is really bizarre. After having found a seminary, in his speech marks, yeah, he had found a seminary, where he receives three disciples, he declares in an issue of February the 14th, 1982, We are Franciscans, of which the bishop is the Pope in Rome. We are not an illegal religious organization without papal approval, like those of the St. Pius X Society. This mission from the Sacred Heart to Buffalo, where it is then, is the only legitimate place where true Catholics in union with the Pope can attend Trident Time Mass in Latin. And now this declaration leads to a process in Rome, and Rome responds on May the 25th, 1982, with the following. A. Meyer, Secretary of the Congregation for Religious at the Vatican. We can now inform you that Brother Bezelis belonged to the Francis Franciscan Vicariate of St. Casimir, but was expelled from the Franciscan Order on April the 17th, 1978. <clears throat> he does not recognize the jurisdiction of the local ordinary, but presents himself as an authentic Franciscan father. <clears throat> it is therefore evident that the organization implemented by Brother Bacellis is not recognized by the Holy See, nor by the, Ameri not, nor by the American hierarchy, and consequently there is no basis to speak of Franciscan foundation 
of which the bishop is the Pope in Rome. A document dated, on, dated from March the 9th, 1982, issued by the Secretary of the General of the Franciscan, has the same content. I see the Roman Catholic, page 2 and 13. Before this disavowal became public, an article would appear in the press in May 1982, again reporting Becelli's statement, Becelli's statement as follows. The other conservative priests have now broken up with Rome for the sake of Rome, while Brother Louis Becelli has, has not yet had to do so. As a member of the Order of Friars Minor, he receives his orders from the Father Superior of the Franciscans in Rome, not from the local bishop. So that is very uh, sect light again. So as we see, it's a case of good windfall and instant about face. Meanwhile, during the first months of 1982, news of Bishop Bishop Ingo's in tax, tax activities began to spread among traditionalist Catholics in the United States. That is in the Roman Catholic of page 12. So Becellis, officially dis disowned, hastens to seize this saving opportunity for him and his work. He begins by highlighting the reprehensible acts of JP2, that is uh, Voltilla, uh, John Paul II. Then publishes in June 1982 two articles which deal with the canonical effects of communion with heretics. A letter from Father Carmona, which establishes that the Holy See has been vacant for 20 years, an article entitled, entitled Abemus Papam, and the answer is no, and on the cover is a photo of Monsignor Tuck with the caption, Man of the Time, the Roman Catholic, page 12. We, oui, exactly, exactly, as, as La Vezans, he, he shows, it's a, it's a case of fragrant uh, windfall and instant about face, okay? No scruples whatsoever, these people. Now, we have a new lightning promotion in speech marks. In the July 1982 issue, we, it already announces the next consecration of Becelli's by tag, with us assistant bishops co-consecrators, because we can also wonder if they, are, if they, were, if they were consecrating, their, their Excellencies Moises Carmona, Adolfo Zamora, and George Musi. The ceremony will take place on August the 24th, 1982 in Buffalo. That is in the Roman Catholic, page 12. Finally, that being prevented, he will be replaced by Musi. And this also shows a galloping ambition. Mm. Here is a brief summary of the claims of the members of, the, of this new hierarchy, named Bezelis and Musi, for the United States. One, they are the ecclesiastical authorities in speech marks. <laughs> Two, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a laughing matter because it cannot be taken seriously, okay, honestly. Two, those who disagree with them are, by implication, <laughs> heretics. Automatically, if so facto. Three, they have divine authority in the speech marks. Four, they alone represent the Catholic Church. So it is very charitable, indeed, very charitable. By such demands, these men establish on their own a hierarchy in speech marks of what can only be called a new religion with its own magisterium. Indeed, they teach that those who do not accept the authority they have taken from themselves are outside the Catholic Church. <laughs> and they imply that such traditionalist Catholics put their salvation in danger. That is, that is serious. Apart from the traditional Catholic bishops, there is no salvation. <laughs> or to compose an aphorism in, late, in Latin, extra vecellis nulla salus. <laughs> which is also comical, to say the least. Tragico-comical. It's tragic. It's, it's tragic. It's tragic. Tragico-comical. Tragic. We, we, we say, 
it's tragic and, and comical at the same time. Mm. Really. Finally, let us mention two other very significant cases of direct collaborators of music, who was the conservator of Pivarunas, and namely the cases of Fuhi and the Kaiser, already briefly mentioned above. Now, number one is Fuhi's case. In an official letter from the Archdiocese of Wellington, New Zealand, written on the 17th of May 1994, and signed by the Cardinal Arch Archbishop, the following sad information is presented. I am happy to reply to the questions you asked in your letter of the 25th of April, which Bishop Dennis Brown of Auckland has passed on to me. Thomas Condon Fuji was ordained priest in Wellington on the 30th of November 1943. In 1969, he applied for licensation. In July 1969, without dispensation, he married in a civil ceremony in the registry office in the town of Bulls, New Zealand. He married a M M Mrs. Jacqueline Lorraine, Gra Lorraine Grant, the mother of two children, a widow since June 1967. On the 13th of March 1970, the petition for legislation was granted by the Second Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, Prot. No. 190869. The legislation was notified to him at Tepuc in 1970. I have heard that the marriage, which was, which was a civil one only, not a religious one, was terminated by divorce. And this is signed by... Logical. Logical, exactly. This is signed by Thomas Cardinal Williams, Arch Archbishop of Wellington, and is cited in Bezelli's magazine, The Seraph, January 2010, page 9. As Bezelli himself recalls against Fuji in The Seraph, number 1, 2010, page 11, we quote, Besides always speaking the mind of all those sitting silently who never seem to have a chance to speak, and be quoted, the outrage is in the fact that Mr. Fifi has been excommunicated from the Roman Catholic Church because he attempted a civil marriage, that is in Canon 2388-1. He was reduced to the lay state based on his own request. This was granted. He was not permitted, therefore, to engage in priestly functions. The entire point here is that he was reduced to the lay state at his own request and that he cannot function as a priest without the special authorization of the Apostolic See. Besides this, his excommunication for attempting marriage is reserved to the Apostolic See. No bishop can leave that excommunication, and the same holds true for any possible readmission to active ministry. And this is very important. Only the Apostolic See, in other words, the Pope, can readmit him to the active ministry. Furthermore, it is the policy of the Church not to readmit those who have been laicized. And it is this defrocked, pseudo married, divorced, sacrilegious income to religious services in a systematic environment that music who ordained Pivarunas and consecrated Carmona, consecrator of Pivarunas, chose as his pseudo vicar general or right hand. Mm. What is more, it is key to that music chose to give the, the, the homily at the consecration of the same Mr. Pivarunas. So all of them were present uh, at this uh, consecration in speech marks. Now, number two is the Kessel's case. Music uses a collaborator, father, the speech marks father, the Kessel, and it is also mentioned by Kelly on page 303, who wrote, who, who wrote this. At some point, a Mr. James de Kessel joined forces with Father Music, priest of the Society of St. Pius X, who visited the Armada Seminary, and Please, please know that Armada is the name of the Michigan village where the first seminary acquired by the Society of St. Pius X in the United States 
is located. So some priests of the St. Pius X Society visiting the Armada Seminary during the mid-70s recalled that there was a man by the same name employed as a cook for a time. The chapel, the chapel register attests that Mr. De Kaisel was married to S. Catherine Mrs. 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 Catherine. We, Mrs. Well, Merci. Thank you. To Mrs. Catherine Mary Ruski by a priest of the Society on May 24, 1974, in Royal Oak, Michigan. In 1982, traditional Catholics began to hear our father, father in speech marks, of course, James D. Casel, who was somehow associated with father music. This father, the Casel, has written a 15 page defense of Monsignor Tuck's actions and issued it on April the 2nd, the day following the ceremony for Father Music in Acapulco. Discreet inquiries revealed that there was a connection between Father Di Caso and a man in Glacia, Montana, who calls himself Father Joseph Maria, and who claims to be a bishop, in speech marks, as a result of his involvement with a schismatic sect. Father Jose Maria informs us in a document signed on June the 7th, 1979, he says, I was told that heaven wants me to be ordained a priest and bishop. So I was ordained and consecrated a priest and a bishop in 1963 and 1964, respectively, very fast, from priest to bishop. <clears throat> Later, I was consecrated conditionally, as attached documents will show without accepting the risk that is really regrettable, respective faith of those who ordained me, serious. The sense of doubt. Uh -huh. yeah. that, that shows a doubt, yes, of course. Yeah. The reconsecration alluded to was performed in 1967 by an old Catholic named Bradley, who pretended to confer priestly and episcopal orders on women as well, also on women, okay? <laughs> in an August the 9th, 1982 letter, Father Jose Maria tells a correspondent that, yes, Father James de Caisel is a properly ordained priest. Why don't you get in touch with him and let him explain everything to you? He was ordained by me earlier this year. I am a bishop and Bishop Music knows me personally. You could also inquire from him. Do not go by hearsay, for people here misunderstand and jump to conclusions and come to the wrong decision. So Mr. Tuck is not the only one involved in this phenomenon who has associated himself with all Catholics. There is an American old Catholic connection as well. Now, when Music died in 1996, it was, this, it was this married, divorced pseudo priest and sacrilegious pseudo bishop who succeeded him as primate in speech marks of the USA and responsible for the entire Western part. Okay, so a uh, massive jurisdiction. <coughs> Excuse me. So, in summary, Vivarunas therefore begins his religious life and ends in his profession under the leadership of Monsignor and his speech marks, Monsignor Shuka, who was a lay person who has gone through the different stages of the ecclesial hierarchy in only three days, from October 29 to November the 1st, 1971. It was a miraculous promotion, a miraculous promotion. We can, you can see that, and we, we have provi provided you with the link below. So, Pivarunas is ordained by Musi, whose career is no less astonishing. Musi was a defrocked priest from the Diocese of Galveston, re-entering the religious circuit in 1977, after spending more than a decade as a restaurant manager. And what a circuit that, that the one who makes it less than four years ago from a small neighborhood trader 
to the status of bishop with the western half of the United States as a diocese and Florida as a bonus. He got Florida as a bonus as well. Remember that the western part of the United States uh, and also Florida uh, are the most Catholic parts in the United States. Okay? So he was intelligent, he was wise to, to, take, to claim this, this part. Hmm. When his training was by his own admission, barely adequate, and then quoted by Griff Rabbi in The Resurrection of the Roman Catholic Church, 200, 2002, on page 167. Tradition may be more lucrative than running a restaurant in Dickinson, Texas. Okay? You can make more money being a traditional priest than being a restaurant manager. <laughs> Terrible. Pivarunas is finally consecrated by Bishop, the speech marks Bishop Carmona, and he was the last, the first having been music, because a month later Carmona died in a tragic car accident with his right hand detached from the body. Mr. Pivaruna's religious roots are, to say the least, unusual, and to be respectful, very unusual. After having seen who this Mr. Pivaruna was, let us see in a second part, in a second part some aspects of his doct doctrine. To do this, we will focus more particularly on the letters cited by Catholic Pedia and that Pivarunas, Pivarunas himself considers a pastoral letter, according to him. 